The history of Alton Towers is one of the more interesting theme park stories in the entire world. Dating back over 700 years, many legends and myths come with the history. You could read on about the stories of this land and its surrounding area for an infinite amount of time. But today, what sits is one of the greatest theme parks in the world. In short, Alton Towers was once one of the largest privately owned houses in Europe, owned by the Earls of Shrewsbury, the Talbots. The grounds at Alton Towers were first opened to the public by the 18th Earl in 1860, and by 1890 Alton Towers was attracting crowds of 30,000 to watch circuses, bands, fireworks, and admire the large gardens. In 1924, the land moved out of the family's hands and the towers were sold to some local businessmen. And then in 1980, it became known as a theme park with the introduction of the Corkscrew roller coaster, which still stands as a monument at the entrance of this park. You can still explore parts of the castle that exist today or take a walk through these massive gardens, which is what makes this such an incredible theme park. Some rides also play on the myths from the past revolving Alton Towers, like Hex, the legend of the towers, telling the local legend of the chained oak, or the Alton Towers dungeon, which is an upcharge attraction that lasts about an hour. Most of the rides at Alton Towers build on that mysteriousness of the land in the theming of the rides. They're darker than most parks. They play on the abandoned and unsettling, rather than the bright and cheery. And it really works extremely well. While being darker, it kind of creates this very calming and peaceful environment. The rides build on these lores and create more new stories. We made it to Alton Towers. Ooh. We're here, it's crazy. It's crazy walking into here and riding the monorail in. The monorail into here, I think is more epic than like going to Disney World, for me at least, because <laughs> you like go over Nemesis, you're like looking down on the rides. Yeah. I almost got into like, Two accidents on the way here, but <laughs> we, we made it. Five on the way here. Alton Towers has nine roller coasters, and they usually market the larger ones as secret weapons, as they have world-first features. It's a great collection that continues to get better here, from family coasters that build up to some of the most thrilling in the world. The marketing and hype that Alton Towers brings to new attractions is unmatched in the industry. On this specific trip, we'd start out with the Smiler because it was a bucket list coaster for some of us. And although in 2024, I personally would recommend heading to Wickerman first and then back towards Rita and 13 before heading towards Spinball, Oblivion, and Smiler, especially with the newer ride being Nemesis Reborn. Maybe some Alton Towers pros can sound off in the comments with some better ideas on how to tackle this part. I'm shaking myself. The Smiler truly is one of the most unsettling coasters to queue for. The crazy theming, the music, and the ride traveling above you with the screams of riders consistently going around. The ride itself might be a little rough, maybe a bit too much for my taste, but definitely one of the more iconic coasters in the world. Right next door at Oblivion, this coaster does its one trick better than any other ride in the world. That hole is huge, and for a piece of coaster track to still be practically vertical while entering a tunnel is super impressive and quite the view from off-ride. Unfortunately, through the years, the music and longer stall at the top of the drop has been toned down due to noise complaints from neighbors, which is a somewhat common issue that Alton Towers deals with consistently. How'd you like Smiler? I, I thought it was like nuts and I think it's really smooth. I, I heard it was gonna be rough going in, but I had my hands up the whole time. I had like no head banging, it's awesome. What do you think? It's a good ride, almost have done that plenty of times before. Yeah. In an inside seat, we got the third row and it was much smoother than like I remember. I've only been on it once and it was like eight years ago. So a very good ride. Oblivion also, I mean, the most impressive thing is just how they dug down so far. It's a hundred. 180, I think. 180 foot drop and uh, like you go up the lift hill, the lift hill starts already at the top of the lift hill. So it's impressive that they just dug that a massive hole. It's, it's a one trick pony, yeah. but it's still a good trick. And it's still, I think yeah. the second tallest drop in the UK, isn't it? But Hex is closed again, which kind of pisses me off because I've Maybe been here three times? the last three times I've been here, it's been closed every single time in like the last seven years. So 
Come on, Alton Towers. Past the towers, Rita is a basic Intamin hydraulic launch. It's nice to have in this park, but not too impressive based on the rest of the rides here. There's also 13 located behind Rita. Also a one trick pony that works really well. Although I do wish the layout itself made more sense thematically and was a bit longer. I had a lot of positives on the second turn. It was awesome. Why is it called Rita? Because uh, backwards, it's Alton Towers Intamin Rocket. Alton Towers Ooh. Intamin Rocket. You can board the Skyride over here, which is equipped with some nice narration that has never really been quite loud enough for me to understand what is actually being said. But the view is unbeatable for a modern day theme park. The gardens in the Valley of Alton Towers is really what makes this place stand out from the others. Wicker Man is one of the more recent additions to this park, and what a great one it is. It's actually one of my favorite coasters here. The layout is interesting with its flat turn in the middle, and there's many crossovers in passing through this large theming structure numerous times. This ride replaced a log flume, and while it's always tough to see log flumes get removed, the coaster really does fit in nicely here, and it uses a bit of the terrain to its advantage. The queue in the pre-show is also a very nice touch that really adds to this attraction. Before we go towards Nemesis and Air, the three major dark rides here, while I haven't been able to experience them all, are all must rides. The Curse of Alton Manor, Nemesis Subterra, and Hex, The Legend of the Towers, truly one of my favorite dark rides of all time, thanks to the awesome presentation. As we make our way across this massive theme park, probably my favorite mock powered roller coaster, the Runaway Mine Train is another great ride here that goes through a tunnel shared with the River Rapids. The Rapids also a fun ride, and while you walk across the park, you'll see more of what makes this park so unique. The unpaved pathways, the small secret paths and little secrets along the way. Another reason that you could spend two days here and still easily enjoy yourself. Nemesis, now Nemesis Reborn, is again one of the most iconic roller coasters in the world. I'll review this as the original Nemesis, as the layout is the same, with some upgrades to the theming and storyline that have been done for 2024. This thing is snappy, fierce, comfortable, and smooth all at the same time. The inverted coaster by Swiss manufacturer Bollinger and Mabillard, it's another example of one of their perfectly engineered rides. Nemesis is unlike any coaster. You load onto the train at a higher point than a lot of the track, resulting in a short lift hill with a lot more speed than you imagine by the middle of the layout. The pathways surrounding the ride are awesome, and the pacing of this ride is some of the best. Starting at ground height and riding so close to the terrain throughout the entire layout, speed is enhanced by every little near miss, and the inverted roller coaster is used perfectly in this setting. This coaster model is made for a ride like this. Nemesis is as unique as they come. The flow of elements and how they are used are unlike any other coaster in the world. It's, it's really impressive, just the amount of land that's cleared underneath the ride. The, the hole is huge. Oh, yeah. You thought Oblivion's hole was big. Wait till you see Nemesis's. I guess, yeah. As Did Nemesis you like little, it? It's really, really good, but I, I do think it was like a little overhyped for me. Next door at Galactica, my favorite B&M flying coaster. The tame elements and forces that aren't too extreme, as well as the terrain usage, is exactly what I want in a flying coaster. I don't need extreme forces on a flyer, I'd rather enjoy the scenery and the sensation that it does to just have you flying through the air. <laughs> We'd walk all the way back to the other side of the park before closing to check out the final credits that we needed and then get any re-rides in before the early closing here. I've been to Alton Towers four times in the past nine years, so I feel like I'm quite familiar with the park now. But one thing that really does bother me is there are always closed attractions. The odds of you actually getting on all of them in one day seems totally impossible. I've missed rides like Subterra when it was supposed to be open, the Mine Train, the Gondola Ride, and for 75% of my visits, Hex has been closed. Even though each time I've booked a trip to the park, Hex was supposed to be ready and open, which is upsetting because it is one of my favorite rides, and it's really great for all ages. And with a ride system that pretty much every larger amusement park chain owns and has no problem operating, it's kind of confusing and unfortunate that this thing isn't always open. I guess the park is cursed for me, 
And while extremely frustrating, I do have faith in the future of the park, and it doesn't stop it from being one of my all-time favorites. For 2024, the Sky Ride will remain closed, yet hopefully all the other rides inside will run reliably throughout the season. I am considering returning again within the next couple years, but I'll keep my eye closely on the available attractions before making any concrete plan. It's always a good idea to spend at least one full day at Alton Towers because there's so much to see at this enormous resort. Walking it alone could take hours, and the operating hours have been short the past many years, but hopefully the future is bright and this park gets the attention it deserves. I believe that hours are on average about an hour longer for this season versus previous ones, so that's a good start. And truly, this could become the best theme park in the world if it tried to be. Here's our accommodations for the night. The Bank House Hotel. And this place is older than the USA itself. I think it was built in 1777, so it beats out the USA by a year. So we're staying in a building older than our whole country. And it's got it's got one of two self-supported spiral staircases inside. That's what it's known for. See at Leon. And if you come over here to the passenger side, you got your prindle in the middle here. Clutch, 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 grass, brake, or you know how they go. That's it. Next up, the reviews head to Spain. So until then, thanks as always for watching and see ya.